Don't say anything. Don't say anything sensitive. Okay, so Raymond's gonna leave his microphone off as much as possible because he has kids and stuff. That's cool, man. And uh, we also have Slack open uh, if you want to get into the ambassador channel and and interact. That's probably the best place to to put questions. <clears throat> All right, let me get a let me get an attendees list. Give me a second here. So we got Chris, Tiffany. What Chris? What is your what is your Instagram um, profile account name? Uh, all IT USA. Okay. We're in with uh, uh, Pierce Smith, like All Green Lights. We run the same uh, a lot of the same projects. Cool. We got Brandon Weber in there as well. Let's see. We got six people total, including myself. Uh, actually, five. We got Raymond. <clears throat> Doesn't look like I'm in the ambassador channel on Slack. I don't know if you can add me or not. Yeah, I, I can. No rush, right but now. you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it right now, Chris. It's I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Boom, you're in it. Welcome to the Ambassador Channel, Chris. So glad you're here. I was going to wait on a few people, but I'd like to get started. We're already like four minutes behind. Oh, man. Hey, John, are, are you on the call? Just want to check in. Yes. There he is. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked to Marco and I talked to Mark Salent and uh, they're going to join, but we can kind of shuffle things around a little bit. It'll be good. Uh, I do want to kick it off and I want to say thank you, everybody, um, for joining again on a Sunday. I really appreciate it. Uh, these these meetings are important to stay, stay connected, stay in touch, do some knowledge sharing community building and uh and growth strategies uh i like to kick it off with a with a quote this one is i choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it apparently bill gates said that and for me what that kind of means is find somebody that wants to find like an easier like more efficient way uh that's a big thing for me i, I like to simplify my life i'm i'm kind of a minimalist uh to a certain extent uh, but I also like to find not necessarily like the path of least resistance, uh, the easy way, but find the most efficient way to do things. Uh, I'm really trying to personally, I'm trying to simplify my life, uh, but at the same time, trying to scale low voltage nation as much as possible in a, in a healthy and productive way. Uh, but I want to keep it as simple as possible, B build that framework and make it scalable and uh, keep, just keep things simple. So there's that. Uh, housekeeping items, press record. I've done that. Keep your phone on mute. If you're parasailing or flying a helicopter, uh, just keep it on mute, please. And then the Slack channel is open in the ambassador channel. And Chris, he says, Oh boy, I feel important now. And that's the emoji, the heart eyes emoji. Thank you, Chris. You are important. We all are. Uh, organizers, I uh, got a couple people maybe that are gonna help me with this. I think because uh, I was talking with Brandon, and I want to hear what Brandon does <laughs> with with his productivity stuff. Uh, he actually has some some cool things going on, some some new stuff he rolled out. And if you would like, well, actually, I would like him to to share some of that stuff. If that's okay with you, Brandon. Yeah, no problem. Cool. All right, um, we got to get these shirts rolled out. I'm gonna wait till Mark. I think Marco is in the. He's in the document, but he's not in the meeting just yet. But we'll we'll talk about those later on because uh, I, I want to get the, that group by for the shirts and and uh, also Chris. I don't know if you if you're aware that we're doing shirts, but towards the bottom of this agenda, uh, Marco Chaffiot from Enterprise CC, he's put together. Uh, 
this awesome shirt with all the ambassador logos or as many people as possible. Um, the deadline was last week to submit a logo, but you might be able to squeeze it in there if you haven't already, Chris. I have not. I wasn't able to join the last couple of weeks. So yeah, I'd love to sneak uh, one of our logos in there. I'll try and reach out to him. Yep. Send it over. He's got he's got a uh, a folder to drop your logo in. So if you click right here, that should well, hold on. Uh, yeah, I guess send it to Marco. There was a folder like a Google Google Drive uh, folder, but just get in touch with Marco. Make sure you get that. If you want a shirt, you can still buy a shirt. You just you won't have a logo if you don't send it to him. All right. Uh, follow all the ambassadors. So if you're on LinkedIn, especially, I'm, I'm huge on LinkedIn. I think it's on fire right now. I think it's great for interacting uh, from a professional level. Uh, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and especially Instagram, Instagram is kind of the central hub for a lot of us. Uh, so follow all the ambassadors, interact with them in a positive way, ask questions, engage, like their stuff if you like it. Um, just keep keep it uh, nice and healthy and, and uh, help people uh, grow their following and, and, and grow their business. That's what we're here for. Cool. So uh, today's agenda and uh, today's topic is uh, documentation and, and productivity tools. For me, this I, I, I'm a real big advocate for keeping things organized, keeping it it documented in, in an effective and efficient way and whatever tool we can use uh and especially ones that are user friendly have a good user experience user interface and are not you know user hostile uh, a lot of software can be a little cumbersome uh so i like to find the best and most efficient tools we have out there and i want to start creating this thing called the gold standard uh so a lot i don't know if you guys have noticed but we're, we're doing a hashtag called gold standard whether that's how to install stuff, how to document stuff, how to quote stuff out. We want to start setting these gold standards and and make you know make it a centralized repository of things that we can uh, reference uh, on how to do things. You know what we think is is the gold standard as a group, and and go from there. So we always have that baseline of what looks good, what's what's the best way to do it. So uh, for me, uh, I, I use. Uh, for, for the company I work for, Guardian Systems, uh, I rolled out SharePoint. So it's a combination of SharePoint and also Bluebeam. So Bluebeam is, if you haven't used Bluebeam, it, it's kind of like a, a, maybe a lightweight AutoCAD, but a lot of people use it in, in as far as I can tell, for like access control uh, systems, surveillance, uh, doing just real basic floor plans. But it's very powerful because you can you can pump out these 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 really good floor plans with all these markups and these markups can be tied to uh run books uh, run books meaning the device the location the ip address you can have custom columns to do whatever you want maybe it's a, a card uh reader or a reader board you can have all these different things documented on a single spreadsheet that gets tied back to the floor plans of all the devices so between something like sharepoint or g suite with google drive uh you're gonna have the latest and greatest um version of that document where everybody has access to it so it's a real simple way to to have a nice workflow of communicating floor plans to your to your field techs so that's that's kind of how how i do it i i know that marco uh also uses g suite i think he uses bluebeam but he also uses field lens and once he gets on the call i want to have him talk about how he uses field lens but i did want to kick it over to uh to brandon and i want to hear a little bit more about uh, what we just talked about in in the uh, in the DMs about uh, pass, I think it's Passport or what's the name of the product, Brandon? It's Passportal. Pass Passport. Okay, so what what are you using Passportal for exactly? So sorry, I have my three and a half year old next to me. Yeah, uh, I can hear. It. <laughs> so Sorry. Passportal, I use for password documentation, asset documentation. Um, client information, ISP information, basically everything that we need to support a business from an IT standpoint. H highly recommend Passport. We'll use it in our MSP, uh, ties into Autotask, uh, PSA, RMM, everything like that. Really, really solid. Exactly. We resell it to a lot of customers as well. Yeah, so they do have a resellable portion that is similar to like LastPass and stuff like that. Um, but I can put your switch information, printing information, 
servers, the file shares are in place and you can link assets together too. So like I have LAN information for this VLAN is tied to this switch and so on and so forth. So that's just giving me all my information about a client in one central location. And then for supporting all of our assets and everything, it's a different software package. And and who was that that just chimed in that also recommended that? Chris. Okay, Chris. So, so you're, you're also using Passportal. And then what was the, you said it ties into Correct. a certain piece of software. What was it? What was the tie in? Uh, I mean, it integrates into pretty much any major RMM or PSA. We happen to be a uh, Datto shop, so we run Datto Autotask. Um, so it integrates heavily into that, which is uh, real nice for, for remote support and automated management, et cetera. And Brandon, how many, is, is this what you're using internally or is this like an internal and external communication mechanism for your customers? I use it internally, but as Chris was saying, we can resell an external portion of it. So okay. me and Chris are very similar in some aspects with right. software packages that we use and all the services that we offer. I mean, I don't go across the whole US like he does, but we have a lot of crossover with being an MSP and doing a lot of low voltage work and all that. So as you can see, we already use some of the same software packages. I'm just, I'm scrolling through the, uh, their website right now. So it's so a, they it's just Sol recently SolarWinds. got bought by SolarWinds yeah, I noticed that. four months ago, I think. Okay. Is that a good thing or a bad yeah, that thing? That wasn't my think? favorite email to receive, but <laughs> yeah. <it could> work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's SolarWinds is a hard thing to swallow. I mean, I was with their RMM for a very long time. They had three buyouts during the time I was with them. And when SolarWinds bought them, it just went to complete garbage. And that's why I'm on Datto RMM now. And uh, Brandon, what size company um, do you have? I'm just a single one man show. We support about 350 servers, PCs, and 30, 40 customers total. I'm just going to look at pricing. Do you, do you find that it's a cost-effective solution for that for your your size company? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's expensive. It's seventy dollars a month for me to have this. Yeah. But I don't have to hunt for passwords. I don't have to hunt for this information, that information. It, it makes my life a lot easier. I mean, being that I'm one person, I can only do so many things at once, and not having to spend five minutes trying to find a specific word document that has this specific information and in it makes life a heck of a lot easier. So is this geared towards MSPs specifically or? No, I think you guys might be able to use it too because you are installing switches and some of you are installing Wi-Fi. You have all these different password assets that you have to remember for all your different customers. So it is, I feel semi geared towards you guys too. Yeah, it but is. their yeah. their whole end game is is MSPs at the end of the day, and so that's 80, 80 bucks a month, and you just pay for one one yep. seat just for yep. you. And, yep. and then how does that look for like on the customer side, like sharing data to customers? Is that is that an option? Can, or? Yeah, you can print out run books. Okay. You can, uh, they have a client side that you can share out passwords to them. Um, I mean, Chris might have more information on that since he's reselling that portion of it yeah there's client side to be honest i'm not as uh, heavily involved in our msp side i mean i own that side used to do a lot more i've got a director on that end that handles a lot of the day-to-day -day. um but uh um i mean it allows things like we can send a manager can can access the passwords within their company. I mean, it's, it's like last pass as far as, you know, we use it like in all our retail stores, everything like that. We use it for, uh, for, you know, a, a new employee has a password to get in to their stuff, but that's it. They don't get passwords to any websites, whether that's PayPal or eBay or, you know, Amazon, whatever. So it's all that, but then management can see, you know, management can change the password at a site. And then us as the MSP can also change and have access and control. So it's multi-leveled, multi-level control um which is is really handy for for trying to keep security you know as tight as possible so definitely uh definitely recommended on that end of things and then helps with with configuration control as well yeah chris chris how big is your team uh, i think sitting right now at about 21 employees 
how, how many how many technicians or how many people are using the software? Um, everyone's got a user account. Everyone's got access to it. But I would say, I mean, there's probably about eight on our MSP side that are heavy, uh, like you know, heavily using it, heavily involved. I don't do a whole lot with it, to be honest. I'm not okay. You know, the expert at it. Um, yeah, just because so, it's not the division that I work in daily. So what do you what did the uh, the other empl- employees think about it? Are they do they enjoy using it? Do they hate it? Uh, are they indifferent? I- We've gotten all good reviews on it. Like everyone, everyone loves it. Um, so I haven't had any issues with it, at least thus far. Like they all like it. We switched from, we had trialed IT glue um, for a while and they liked this a lot better than IT glue. Um, so that's what we ended up going with about a year and a half ago, I want to say. And how does it relate to like a ticketing system for internal, external? Does it have a ticketing system in it? No, Not the, no, it, it's really a data, you know, da- data management behind a ticketing system, you know, your yeah. ticketing system, you don't want to have to rely on to log in and see all your VLAN setups, all your switch setups, all your port setups, all your, you know, multi location, multi stuff. Um, cameras, especially when you start, you know, we've got sites that have cameras, access control, Wi Fi, you know, full network phone system, you know, end end, we handle everything. And that can be a pretty pretty substantial layout even if you're running a pretty flat network um and so you don't want that all you know buried in some configuration ticket that now you have to find a ticket from three years ago or fill up all your you know your your page and your auto task or whatever with your basic configurations so tying it in on that um just makes life a lot easier yeah i completely agree i mean i have a partner company that's done some installs for me and i recently had to ask them for a password that for a firewall they put in five years ago, it took them 45 <laughs> minutes to find me the password. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're sitting there with a site down, that's not acceptable, you know? Exactly. And uh, Chris, what are you guys using for a ticketing system? Uh, we're on, we're on Datto. Uh, okay, so Autotask, Autotask oh, PSA, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've never, I've never used either of these products. So, uh, so Datto, it, it makes Datto Autotask... Bought- Okay. Yeah, data bought auto task, so it's it's in the process of being migrated over. Okay, I got you. And and what do you think about that system? It's it's a uh, my guys again know it a lot better than I do. I haven't really taken the time to learn it, I even though you. we've been on it for like three years. Um, it's in depth. There's a lot. It's, it's if a you don't lot. Follow it. Um, we just recently switched over to Quoter, um, which was previously Socket, um, for quoting, um, just because the way that like Autotask, for instance, the way they do quoting isn't very pretty, um, or easy. There's a lot of steps to convert, um, kind of that lead into that sale and quote and approve. And it's not really an accounting system either. Um, so it ties in better. So, I mean, the, the biggest thing with Autotask is, and this goes for pretty much every PSA out there, um, or PSA RMM is you pretty much need a litany of add-ons. You know, if you're going with other ones have their, their versions, you know, SolarWinds has their versions, everything else, you know, all total by the time we finish up, you know, we're spending $1,800 a month on software to run our, you know, run the company. But that's everything from quoting software to auto payment, ACH management to, you know, contract management to, you know, password management, everything else all together and worth it every day. Because, like, you know, yeah, we can run it off of Excel spreadsheets, but, you know, that takes three times as much time and right. doesn't work very well. <laughs> so, but if you're expecting, you know, auto tasks, for instance, to be the end all be all and run everything through it, and that goes for anyone out there. It, I don't think that that's a realistic expectation, even though that's what the sales reps are going to tell you. Um, so that's kind of my, my outlook on it anyways. Chris, are, are you doing a lot of structured cabling work? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we do a lot. So what are you doing on that documentation side? Are you using pass portal for that? Or? Um, so most of our customers don't need a whole lot of documentation on that. Um, just because they don't do, um, I guess they just, they don't, they don't, we don't have to do a whole lot. Um, as long as everything's numbered end to end, they don't care past that. Um, so we don't have to do a lot of documentation. Um, outside of that, we'll usually run it in, uh, you know, I'll do up a, like a passport, I'll do up a doc, um, with what equipment's plugged in where. So, you know, which cameras are using, you know, basically IP Mac, 
address, uh, you know, uh, patch panel port number, you know, switch port number, that kind of information. Um, that's more so when we're doing the end solution than when we're necessarily doing the, uh, just pure, you know, pre-wire and, and finish wiring. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess my question was, you know, uh, how are you documenting, you know, when you start plugging into something like a VMS or a, or a switch? So you're actually documenting all that stuff in pass portal, switch, if, switch if, number, patch, patch panel number and all that stuff. Yep. Yep. If, if we're, uh, if, if we're the one managing it, so we do a yep. lot, uh, okay. if you follow us on all green lights at all, we do a lot for a large company out of California. And so they've got internal it, they handle everything there. We handle the end to end between that. So we install all the equipment, and everything else, but we don't touch configs. We don't touch any of that stuff. So they don't, you know, I don't have to document much. We take photos of the racks and that's all they need. They run a very flat network, so we don't have to do a whole lot there. So that's our, you know, nice and not nice some days. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing a lot of work with Pierce. Uh, yeah. Okay. And yeah, we so do a lot. Pierce is using Pass Portal as well in conjunction it, with it, what you guys do. It, is he now? I'm not sure if he is. Uh, he, okay. I, 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 just kind of, I just kind of assumed that he was just kind of logging in, you know, with, with you guys. If you, if you did, did a lot of work with him, I just kind of assumed that. Yeah, one of the yeah, nice things with Pass Portal, too. Good. Oh, you got. It. He, yeah, he pretty much only does work for the one customer. Um, so because they don't require any of that stuff, then they don't need anything else. Uh, um, where you. we have that customer is a good solid, like probably sixty percent of our infrastructure side, but then we've got forty percent, and then another you know hundred percent of our MSP and retail, you know everything else. Because he's 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 pretty much a one man band. I've got a lot more employees to deal with, so we kind of are, you know, real close on a lot of things, but we're still you know on different pages as far as where the companies are at and what, you know, what we're having to focus on. Gotcha. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah. One of the things that I really like being a one man band with pass portal is there's what I like to call the hit by the bus protection. <laughs> so once everything's documented, you can have pass portal run a report and basically create a run book of every piece of documentation that's in pass portal in something that a customer can actually understand and quickly look at it and understand, okay, here's where this is linked. Here's what that does. Here's what this does. So if I get hit by a bus, they have all their passwords. They have all their information. They have everything good to go in a binder. They don't have to worry about me still being alive after I get hit by that bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for us uh, at Guardian Systems, this will be very beneficial because we do a lot of, we do structured cabling. We install switches. We tie them into VMSs, access control. We do the whole stack almost in some, in some cases of the technology. So uh, right. be, be very beneficial because we're not, we're not really doing nearly what we should be in terms of handing off to customer and then doing internal documentation. Yeah. And it goes back to how many times you get in the phone call of what's this password? What's this IP address? What's this? What's that? And <laughs> It's a nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, let's see who else is on the phone call. I think Marco may have gotten on. And I mean, there's no one size fits all every business when it comes to this type of stuff. And you can ask Chris, I mean, it. this type of software is a very big hot button issue in the MSP groups on Facebook. I mean, everything's a hot button issue in those freaking groups. But <laughs> when, it, <laughs> when it comes to software that we use, and the RMMs that we use, it's tends to be a nightmare. And billing is the other big thing. Yeah, it's it's the daily which one's the best, and there's no there's no right answer, you know. Exactly. Yeah, but it, it seems like Pass Portal might be up there and could meet that gold standard that we're trying to set, or some at least like a good recommendation. It sounds like both of you guys are using it effectively, and your employees enjoy using it as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with it. There's another one out there called SI Portal that's like 300 bucks a year, but it, the GUI is just terrible. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, um, Marco, uh, looks like you joined the call. Uh, we, we're talking about uh, Pass Portal for, for documenting stuff, but more so like a, on the MSP side of stuff. What are what are you you using on your MSP side of things where you're you know like switches and pass passwords and everything? What type of documentation are you using? So, um, hey guys, we typically use LastPass, and then we have our uh, project documentation software within uh, G Suite. And I know that's kind of like that can be kind of um, 
I guess, unsecure in a sense, because, you know, whoever has access to those client folders now has access to that um, file. But it's, I, I kind of use like a, a date range nomenclature where that it can be restricted or, or only the people who, the only, the only people that will know anything on that password is the people who are doing it unless they go in and look at it. And a lot of time I usually don't let the techs get into that so much, but I was also, I personally use LastPass in with my passwords and, and whatnot, but I, I also was using it on the project document side too. So I, I kind of like that function as well. I think he just went on mute, Marco. Yep, I'm I'm here. Okay. Yeah, you, you went on. One mute. other thing I'd like to add in too is with Passportal, there's audit trails. So when somebody makes a change to anything in Passportal, there's a log of that change at the time and date that that change was made and what they changed. So there's accountability for all these changes too. If somebody screws up a password, you know who it was and at what time and what date it was. Yeah, that, that's that's good. Um, like re revision history is is very important, obviously. Yeah, it's definitely key. It's like an audit, tr you know, the audit trail. Marco, have you heard of Pass Portal? Uh, I haven't. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's actually, uh, I, I've never heard of it either. And it's actually hearing Brandon and Chris talk about it. It sounds like something that that would behoove us to look into for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I, I did talk about uh, Bluebeam and uh, and SharePoint and G Suite. Uh, Marco, are you you're using Bluebeam, correct? Bluebeam with the, with the other um, as far as documenting or, or doing the the drawings, or as far yeah. as um, recording. Okay, yeah, for, for doing the drawings, yeah, yeah. I I've been using it for probably four years, and you know it's it's been great. It's it's just. It's very simple to use and it makes everything look very professional without having to deal with, uh, you know, AutoCAD. Yeah, it's a lot easier than AutoCAD. And are, are you putting it on customer handoff, like as as built and, and like dropping yes. your logo on it, making it look all pretty? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a template that we use oh, that, nice. okay. you know, I kind of, me being... Being the way I am, I change right. them pretty frequently. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so by doing that, you know, we're selective, though, right? A lot of people will do drawings before they get the contract, sure. and we try to stay away from that because yeah. you get, you know, people take the take what you give them, right, and they run away with it. So, yep, yep. Sometimes they they land on my desk, and I get to mark up somebody else's plans, and then I then I get to win the bid. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, Bluebeam has been a game changer in terms of stepping up, stepping it up, uh, and giving a you know an as built and and making it look really professional with you know putting the logo on there and and documenting stuff. And also, I don't know if you use the uh, the markup list uh, to export all of your devices that are on that sheet, but I use that yes. as the run book and the and the and the the checklist for installing devices, which I think is very important. Definitely, yeah. And then what we'll, we'll typically do is when we export that, we'll put it into um, a Google Sheet. Yep. And then, of course, that's got everything in it with the full takeoff on it. Yeah. And one of the, yeah, and one of the cool things about Bluebeam is that it uses a PDF as a native file format. Correct. So you can easily just uh, open it up on an Android or an iPad or, or any device <laughs> that supports a PDF, which is everything. Um, right. So as you're making your edits and you have it, in like Google Drive or SharePoint, it's the latest and greatest PDF. So there's no like proprietary stuff. There's no like logging into, you know, all these different systems. It's just a PDF. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. F uh, field Lens. Um, can, can you kind of describe your workflow with Field Lens? Like how that, because I've, I've yet to see it. You're supposed to give me a login, but I don't know. Oh, if you <laughs> You gotta remind me, man. You gotta remind I know, me. I, I got. <laughs> I have two things going on, and I can't remember all of them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so, so tell I'll, me how, I'll how that put works. That on my short list for you right now. Yeah, yeah. That's not, <laughs> not a big deal. Um, you know, it's been. It's just it's such an easy tool. Um, you know, I refer to it like, 
as if it were the Facebook of project management software. And, you know, I got all different age ranges using it, right? You know, they're not just young guys doing it and, uh, and or older guys. And, and it's, and it's cool because if it's, we generally like to set it up or I'll tag everything before the job starts. So that way they're literally just updating those locations, but we can literally track everything within that job. And if someone says, Oh, the sheetrocker screwed this up or, or this was, or, or you guys left your wiring where it was exposed. We have proof of it. We have the background of it. We have the whole going back to the audit trail, like you said, with, um, with passport, with, with having an audit trail, that is key because we can hold everybody accountable. You know, in this industry, a lot of people like to point fingers and when they have backing to show that it wasn't anybody's fault, but theirs, <laughs> it kind of catches everybody. Yeah. And so w- when you're doing like punch list and, and documenting uh, jobs, you can just easily just take a picture and can you also take a video and put yes. it in the field lens? Okay. And you can, you can take a picture. So what's cool too is if say we have a wall, right. And we have a bunch of different drops on it. If they want to, if the guys in the field want to have a whole aspect of the, of that field, let's say, or that, that wall, you can mark up that picture and say, Hey, you know, the circled area is, um, is the Jack that was in question that had an issue. There was a cut wire. You could put text on it. It's almost like marking it up natively. Um, in like a Photoshop condition in a sense. Right. And that's, that's really cool. Cause a lot of my guys will do that or, or will you can draw like an arrow on it and say, move the camera from here to here. And there's really no questions about what needs to be done. And of course you have that whole conversation chain within that post. Yeah. For me, that that's huge because my, my phone is in a constant state of running out of disk space because of all the videos and pictures I take on a job site for a punch list. Sure. So, yeah. So it's, I, I think it's very, it's, it's very contextual and important to have like the customer actually talking about what they want on a video and like showing and like zooming in on the exact thing that they're talking about. So, well, and the, and the big thing is too, then in our weekly meetings, we can give them a report and they, instead of saying, Hey, enterprise, what do you have going on? It's like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I got that report Wednesday. I know what's going on. They're good to go. Right. Kind of like out of sight, out of mind. You just exactly. you know it's in there and you can be ready for your meeting without doing much prep work. You're doing the prep work on the job during a concurrent document. Yeah. And you just have to stay on top of it. That's all it is. You know, I tell my guys, look, do it every day. Take 20 minutes at the end of your day and make sure everybody's updated. Are, are you cracking the whip on them quite a bit? I mean, like, hey, man, you didn't do your documentation. Or is that like a problem at Enterprise or is do they just – do it. I wouldn't say it's a problem. Um, yeah. Guys do forget to do it. Like they'll take the pictures and then they'll come in the office and be like, Oh, I forgot to post the, the photos, to field lens. And I'm like, I guess you should do it now before you leave because <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you, you got to treat it lightly, right? Because it's like another piece of tool that they have to use. And it's like, well, when do we use it? But like I said, I tell them do it at the end of the day, take 20 or 30 minutes to get everything caught up because then, when we have our meeting at the end of the week, everything is up to date. And you didn't take three hours on a Friday to do it. You did it every day like you were supposed to. Cool. Is anybody using Procore? Anybody? Dirty word. Dirty word, yeah. Because they, <laughs> they take a percentage. Is that what you're yes. telling me? <laughs> yep. They take a percentage of what your jobs are <laughs> annually. It's crazy. It's. I feel like that's like trying to gouge the um the the environment if you will you know yeah i've used procore on from uh, do, getting subbed out and i have to log into it and get some stuff i didn't realize they took a percentage yeah yeah i, I mean we use it a lot too you know and then and then i put it into uh into fieldlands <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh labeling patch panels cables racks um obviously that's important Marco, what are you what are you doing to document that stuff? Is that going in your spreadsheets and G Drive, or how does that work? Phys- physically or on the back end documentation? Both. Okay. Um, physically, we typically use the uh, Dymo Rhinos. We have a whole boatload of those. Um, and then 
when we're completed, uh, I do have a template made in Google Sheets that we track, you know, ports, patch panels, locations, and we give that, hand it off to the customer or we'll just share it out with them. And then if we go and do any changes, we can update that document as well. And you're pretty consistent with that, would you would you say? Yes, especially yeah. on the bigger jobs too. And do your techs have access to uh, Google Drive and the sheets and everything? Or are they logging in and like actually documenting stuff, or is that done after the fact? Um, right now, it's typically either myself or, or one of my two people in operations, just because the guys in the field have so much going on that I try not to pull them off um, to do too much documentation. I mean, it it does it does of course help if they can do it, but a lot of times they'll hand, hand off like a, you know, I hate to say it, but a written piece of paper and then we just key it in right away. That way we don't lose it. This yeah. paper gets lost too quickly. <laughs> I'm always a big fan of concurrent documentation. Just like have a computer or a phone or something and just put it in there. But it's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be definitely. It's hard to get other people to do it. Um, I, I always take a step back and people probably get frustrated with me. It's like, I got to log in and like take some notes. They're like, no, just do the job. <laughs> it's like, this is, yeah, the- <laughs> yeah, do it, do it quick and get it done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Um, Chris, what are you guys using for concurrent documentation or like, how, are you just labeling stuff on the cables and the patch panels? Yeah. I mean, most of our customers aren't needing much more than uh, cable patch panel. Um, so we don't end up recording a lot of it um, because we don't really ever get the phone call of like, you know, our printer, we know which port number it's plugged into sort of a deal. Um, for the right. customers that we yeah. do do that, then we're recording in LastPass okay. typically. Um, but, or pass portal, sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, that seems to work. I mean, it's definitely an area we I'd like to see us getting better at. I'd like to have the full documentation of, you know, register to phone, you know, is in this port plugged into this jack plugged into this port on the switch. Um, probably one of our biggest challenges is that a large percent of our sites are done, you know, 96 hours on the ground or, or 72 hours on the ground. And so we're under, we're under, you know, really tight deadlines. And some days we're finishing within, you know, two, three hours of, of a site opening. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to ask my guys to go spend an hour documenting when it's either they spend an hour documenting or they go to sleep and they've been up for 20 hours. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, cause we, we do a lot of those really, really tight, really, uh, involved sites. Um, but, uh, something we definitely, I like to see us get better at. So yeah. I'm a fan of more info. Chris, are, are you on the road constantly? Is that your deal? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I, I jump around my company pretty much to wherever, wherever we're short staffed and the last two years or so we're short staffed in heavy infrastructure. So, um, I end up all over the, all, I mean, I'm in Charlotte today, the last week we, we hit 14. Well, after we finish tomorrow, we'll hit 14 sites in five States across Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Georgia, North Carolina. Um, and then back to Wisconsin for before Thanksgiving. So cool. Wow. it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, it gets crazy some days. I mean, we got new builds still in Georgia, North Carolina, and Arizona yet to finish this year. And, and, and that was after things slowed way up. So <laughs> it gets a little, a little insane some days, but you know, gotcha. can't complain too much. Cool. Uh, the last thing that I want to share, uh, I've already told people about this, but the people that don't know, uh, I outsource my AutoCAD stuff to Upwork. Uh, it used to be called Elance and then Upwork bought Elance, but it's just outsourcing stuff, especially like digital goods. Um, but I, I have a guy in India, 20 bucks an hour, and he's phenomenal. So if anybody wants an introduction or wants to know more about Upwork, uh, let me know. I don't get commission off of it. I just will tell you how to navigate it. So that's always an option. Cool. Uh, any other questions or any comments on uh, documentation side? If not, we'll we'll keep moving forward. One thing I would add, to with our patch panels, I mean, we document it. About to the extent that Chris does, but we also color code everything. So Ooh. at a glance, yeah, they know cool. that that color cables for Wi-Fi. That color is your uplink from the modem to the firewall, and then from the firewall to the switch is a different color, so on and so forth. Good point. 
Oh, absolutely. That color color coding the patch cables makes life a heck of a lot easier when you're, in my case, two thousand miles away. So, exactly. <laughs> yeah, us as us as well. We, I actually made a a standard uh, an enterprise CC standard color documentation. So if it's a new job, we'll go in and we'll just run it typically based the way we have it spec. Unless it's like a hospital or or municipality where they have standard already, but definitely end to end color coded for sure. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll make that standard the gold standard and get everybody on board. Cool. All right. So next section, we're going to jump on into uh, goal setting and review. Uh, for me, I like to set the three podcasts, uh, and I completely missed the mark on that. Um, I'm not sure I even did one podcast this week. It was so busy, and I haven't been reaching out to people on Instagram. So with that being said, if anybody wants to do a podcast, do a specific focused podcast on um, anything in particular, or if they have somebody in mind that might be a good fit, uh, whether it's like a business owner, uh, even a vendor, I get vendors on the podcast, uh, let me know. And uh, I would love to uh, love to do another one with somebody. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll do one soon. I just got to get through this next week or two. It's a little chaotic. <laughs> you say that every time. <laughs> plus, plus, as my Canadian family likes to say, we have fake Thanksgiving coming up also. Wait, you're Canadian? I didn't know yeah, that. I'm, yeah, I'm half Canadian. I, we probably talked about that. You're half, yeah, you're yeah. Canadian. all my family, my mother's whole side of the family is in Toronto and uh, St. Catharines. That's, I think we talked about that. There's a few, there's several people that we have in the channel that are Canadian. So. Yeah, they like to call me. this fake Thanksgiving. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, just let me know, man. We'll get on that. Um, we'll do. Marco, what, what's what's your goal status? Did you um did you hold more meetings and get more efficient? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we did. Um, we have been doing our. Uh, I have my operations meetings on Mondays now. Uh, just to kind of get caught up from uh, the week prior and then push for the week forward. And then uh, the team has is, is seemed to be uh, a little bit more efficient um, this past week. So I don't know if there's something in the water, but I'm not questioning it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, what's your goal this week? Just keep getting more efficient? This week, uh, I want to I really focus on 2020, see what kind of projects we have coming up. Uh, and what the capabilities are going to be. And then I also want to look at um, 2020 growth and kind of uh, try to not revamp, but kind of focus on the customers and see who doesn't have our full package, if you will, uh, or, or a gold package and see if we can acquire that other work from them or for them. Cool. Sweet. Uh, Mark Salent. Is he on the call? I guess he didn't get on the call. Huh. All right. But he, he did make a lot of progress with with his van. So everybody keep giving him support to get that van up and running. Uh, Mason's been super busy. He actually had, I think, there's like 100 cables or 100 drops he's got to do today or something. It's It's ridiculous. But he's moving down that path for sure. Will, I'm not sure what's going on with Will. <clears throat> Talk to Kramer. Kramer sent me an interesting DM a few minutes ago. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <clears throat> oh, and uh, John, I think John stepped out for a minute, but I don't, I don't know if you if you got a chance to get back. Did you get back, John? Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I, I was never on. I was just uh, um, I was just away away from the device. I could still hear, but I, I couldn't unmute. Oh, I got you. So I, haven't, I haven't really missed anything. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how yeah. was uh how was ISC East? Did you learn a lot? Um, I I did. I, I learned that it's a it's probably it's a very good investment if you're uh, if you want to go to the show, because um, uh, most of the same companies are there, um, but but everybody has a small booth. It's like, uh, um, and so you you know you like. Uh, for example, Brevo was there in a, you know, in, in a 10 by 10 booth <laughs> and with, and, uh, you know, and, and with, the, with about the same number of people. And so, you did, so, I mean, it was great, uh, um, uh, you know, talk to them for a while. Um, and, and, uh, a couple of things. One, I guess I, I was in the same room as Marco for, um, 
couple hours and I <laughs> couldn't seem to connect. But this is a bummer. Um, Sorry about that, John. No worries. Uh, and then uh, what, what was great is, um, you know, I've been, uh, I've been talking to this uh, power supply company for about a year about doing an integration to Genetech. And they've, uh, you know, it's like uh, I had kind of given up on them. And I guess for their, um, their, their sales VP or something just saw me walking through the, uh, and said, John, John, you know, are you, we, we finally got the approval and funding. Are, are you still available? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it was, <laughs> so it was great. You know, 80% of life is just showing up as they say. And, um, and just you know, being in somebody the front of somebody's mind when when they have um, when they have a job for you. I mean, you, uh, if you're going to sell cars, you know the first thing you need to do is to tell everybody that you are in it. In fact, in the business of selling automobiles, and so part of that, and so part of that is just showing up and say, hey. <laughs> Do you want to build an access control system? Do you need some panel firmware? Um, and that kind of brings us like, uh, you, and I had mentioned this in the Slack channel, but um, uh, the uh, Blake's uh, tagging and mentioning um, just you know, kept me bubbling up in in a very influential uh, guy's um, feed this week, and uh, and you know called me uh, out of out of the blue. Uh, I hadn't spoken. I met it. I had met the guy a couple of years back, you know, exchanged, um, uh, exchanged cards, uh, connected on LinkedIn, nothing happened. And then, um, in the, uh, all of a sudden he starts, you know, uh, he still starts seeing me in his feed because, you know, Blake is tagging and all that. And, uh, so, um, I, you know, he, uh, has a, a, a job for me. And, um, so that's, so stuff works, you know, it's, it's, you know, you just use social media, uh, use awareness to, um, to let people know what you're doing and things, the good things come from it anyway. Yeah, it, it definitely does. I mean, just the more content, uh, you pump out, obviously you're going to be top of mind and that's the strategy that I've deployed and it works. It comes full circle and now you owe me barbecue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what are your uh, what are your goals for for this week, John? Uh, well, um, uh, let's see. I didn't. Well, I got well, something stuff done last week, um, but it seems like I've been uh, just adding more and more to the pile. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, I've uh, uh, I, I got to rework. Um, some uh, some card format uh, logic on uh, Honeywell Pro Watch. Um, I got to uh, I got to help Brevo with uh, uh, with with some of the stuff they're doing this week. Um, if uh, if I can if I can get through this week uh, and you know um, and with getting you know at least six hours of sleep a night and not having uh my wife and and family want to kill me i think i'll call that a success cool i'll uh i'll facetime you midweek and check in while i'm in a data closet sound good <laughs> sure <laughs> Blake's in the closet <laughs> cool man all right sounds good thank you uh pierce pierce can't I can't join today. <laughs> Wait, what is going on with his ransomware attack? Twenty million dollars. <laughs> My God, that is that's a lot. Well, a story came out the other day about a MSP out of Wisconsin, I think it was, and they have a ransom for fourteen million dollars, and a hundred and ten nursing seen- homes had data encrypted on it. VCPI. It's actually more than one hundred and ten. Yep. It's one hundred and ten nursing home uh, chains. So oh. I think closer to probably three or four hundred locations. Even better. <laughs> Wait, so, so they they popped the MSP and then yeah they pivoted they, to all the customers. To, to, to be fair, I think a large part of it is they've been VCPI has been cutting costs hard for the last like four years. They used to be really right. solid. They terminated pretty much all their field techs, went all the low bid subcontractors, and like just I feel like they're 
their main focus switched a lot. And I mean, there's a few security folks out there saying after inspection, like they've been infected for over a year and then it finally, you know, the infection, finally they, they pulled the trigger on it and uh, we were able to take down every location everywhere. So is that, is that the one based out of Florida? No, that one's out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, Milwaukee. Okay. Jeez. And I mean, they were, they had everything in one single pane. I mean, they were doing all their hosting websites, payroll, phones, email, everything was managed by this one company for all these nursing homes. So when they got them, they got them good. That's terrible. And I mean, they're going after. Can you imagine having the the insurance risk on that one on the MSP side? Exactly. I think they, I don't think they were insured for enough because they said they couldn't pay the 14 million. Wow. And I mean, they're going after MSPs left and right now because yep. unfortunately, some of us are an easy target because a lot of these guys just see, hey, I can make all this money and not do anything on my end to protect myself. Well, it comes down to the almighty dollar until the dollar is out of budget. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you watch uh, Tom Lawrence on YouTube, he's done a few good write ups on he's why this is good happening. Ones, yeah. Why this is Which, happening? If you haven't met Tom, if you haven't met Tom, he's a he's a he's a great guy. I see him every every month or so, and uh, he's he's good good people over there. Yeah. Cool. CTS. Haven't heard from them in a while. I think they're busy expanding. Uncle Bear. Hey, Marco. Did Uncle Bear get his logo to you? Yes, I actually just updated the um, Google Doc at the bottom there. I have a, I had I think two or three of them I had to add. Cool, and I, I think Raymond's on, is, the, is on it, the call. Go ahead. Is it too late to slide another one in there, Marco? Or no? I don't. I didn't get the uh, get one in. Uh, um, no, you can send it over. That'd be fine. All right. Any chance you can DM me or whatever your uh, sure. or I don't know somewhere what, what I need to send. Thanks. No problem. And then uh, I think Raymond's on the call. And uh, Raymond, how you doing, man? How are the goals going? Uh, they're going good. Um, it's uh, I'm trying to set goals for the end of the year on uh, finding good partners because for the past like ten years I've been subbing out to large national companies, and one thing I found out is. In order to be successful, you got to find product lines and stick with them. So that way, your the crew is efficient, everyone's efficient, and you learn right. a couple of things. So that's like we have one um, opportunity now for a national retail store because we do a lot of retail stores. And it's funny they have 427 stores, and none of them have a burglar alarm, but they got cameras. So <laughs> they approached us on a solution. So just trying to find the right products to and like you know marco's like a uh, a lot with uh, brevo and a couple other manufacturers but the companies we do work for like they'll use exact they'll use access cameras they'll use dmp alarms they'll use digital watchdog uh camera systems so we're just trying to find the right partners um that will fit our needs and also the customers needs you know i've used a lot of them being a sub i've used open eye they're great i've used digital watchdog they're pretty cool Exactly, we've done a lot, but it's just you know finding the right price point and um, the right product to, to you know to team up with. I, I do a lot of alarm.com stuff, and we've done their access controls recently, a few of them, and they're pretty nice. But sometimes people don't want to pay that recurring monthly, mm. so you know, just trying to find the that's my goal right now. I'm looking at Paxton, we've done ICT. Just, just trying to get a feel for the market. And these ISC shows are great. Um, I went to the ISC West this year, and uh, you get a, you know, you get hands-on feel. You get to talk to the people, and you get to make pretty good contacts on, um, you know, products and literature and the people at these companies. So you could uh, go back home and do some study, and they, they get back to you. A lot of them get back to you, and they're pretty nice people, and they help out a lot. So. Right, right, right from ISC West, I got, I got in touch with the Paxton guy and we got Paxton certified, we went to our training and it was, you know, just a different look and uh, they follow up and they're, it's, it's just another contact. So that's my yeah. goal for the rest of the years because these past 10 years, like a lot of the guys here on this um, 
on our in our group here we travel I, I mean i travel just the northern part of california but we just had another baby and it's just getting old and there's just going to the bay area traffic is like three <laughs> four hours each way and you know our jobs are all laborsome so i'm trying to set up my own uh, start doing our own services so we can stay closer to home a little. Sure. Not sub out as much as we, we've been doing. Yep. So that's my goal. Cool. Uh, yeah. Marco, do you have any advice for him? I, I know that you have a pretty solid stack of, you know, Brevo, Eagle Eye. I think it's, is it Eagle Eye that you're using? Eagle Eye, yep. yep. Yeah. Which we're going to try to get them, get them on a podcast too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. um, yeah. I mean, you know, Raymond, it's, what we've seen, um, you know, good approach that you, that you have. Just remember when you find something, if you can kind of hone in on what manufacturers you want to keep really as your preferred, right? Because if you get too broad, then you kind of lose that, not the niche, but you want to keep your manufacturers close, right? And the more you, you the more money or the more business you give them, the more benefit you have overall. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> when we first started and you know, we kind of, we did everything. We were carry. We were key scan. I mean, I'm practically certified on almost every access control and and surveillance system out there because I just kind of you know you catch an eye and you're like, oh, this looks cool. Let me play with this, and you just keep jumping around. So um, it's good. It's good education, but it's also I wouldn't want you guys to have to go through the same thing. You know, for four or five years to figure out what you like. Um, so. Uh, and you know blake can attest to this anything if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out you know i i love giving the um constructive criticism i'll say on on the platforms <laughs> yeah no, no, you, marco's been great uh, i mean he told me about eagle eye and um and brevo i mean i've heard of brevo in the past but eagle eye and how they work together and i've been in touch with eagle eye and yeah that's 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 one thing that that's what i was saying is i've noticed a lot of companies that are key to the, their success is they pick a couple of manufacturers and they partner with them and they just roll with it rather than jumping back and forth. And so some guys do like, uh, like right now, pro data key, they talk very well with digital watchdog. Some guys, um, so they just, they just run with those two, you know, a couple of brands and it, that's what they stick with and it makes everybody more efficient. So I learned, right. I saw that with Marco, I've seen that with companies we've done work for these past 10 years and just trying to get fit into the right, um, you know, you find the right ones. So, but uh, Eagle Eye and Brevo look really cool, and so and they're really and, nice and you know, not not pitching them at all. But if you guys have anything, you know, uh, and again, I'm hoping to get Brevo and Eagle Eye on the um, podcast. Blake and I have been talking about that, and I'm very close with those guys. I know the the president of both companies very well, and the founder, and you know, they know us. And I'm not tooting my own horn by any means, but you know, use me as a resource if you guys have any questions about it. And if you have any issues, even reaching out and getting the sales guys, if you have a problem with anything, just let me know. Um, uh, you know, like I said, I have very good connections with them. So I'm here to help. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That, that's one of the things that really draws me to Marco is that he really hones in on specific products, has a good relationship with them and is successful at rolling them out. You know, me as a technician, I guess, you can call me a technician because I'm installing stuff all day long. I have to learn everything and it's a nightmare. And a lot of this stuff is just, you know, it's either above my head or it's, it's not good. It's not a good product. And it just, it wears me and it wears out the technician. So honing in on those products are, are paramount importance in, in my opinion. So. Absolutely. Because, and then you stay proficient that way too, right? Cause if you have 15 different access control platforms, your, all your guys, when they go to do put one in, they're gonna be like, "Oh, I don't remember this one. I just did a Brevo, or exactly. I just did a carry." Yeah, it's and, and you don't want that because you want to again efficiency. I as always, I, I hate to say it this way, but I always say cut the fat because you want to be a smooth operating machine. You don't want to be all over the place. Yep. Cool, uh, Mick. Are you are you still on the call? Yeah, still here, mate. <laughs> you have to excuse my voice. Of uh, got a bit of a cold this morning. So oh no. Me. You're, you're outside too much recording videos. <laughs> That's right, mate. Yeah, you got to look after myself a bit better. 
you, you've, you've sounded a lot better on our previous phone calls, man. You sound you sound terrible. <laughs> oh, I know, mate. It's, it's, uh, it's up in my nose sometimes. And oh, it no. affects my voice, Joe. So, uh, yeah, how was your how was your week, man? It looks like you post a lot of content. You're obviously doing a lot of work. How was it? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, same sort of stuff. Uh, chasing copper faults and copper installs. Um, trying to understand TikTok. My uh, kids <laughs> yeah. have been on. I'll just do following Gary V's advice of uh, jump on TikTok. You know, it's not just well, it's still for kids a little bit, but it's it's heading more towards adults. So um, my kids have been trying to teach me, you know, how TikTok posts are different to Instagram posts. So um, that's something I'm trying to learn. Yeah, it's uh, uh it's definitely different. Uh, but the thing is, is that those kids are going to grow up and they're going to buy your product or whatever. They're going to consume your content on some level. So targeting them at an early age, I hate to say the word targeting, but in my opinion, it's it's a pretty important thing to get them educated on, on what you're trying to do. Yeah, that's what I, was, I suppose the question is. Do you, do you target the children or do you target the, you know, the 20-year-olds that are, that are starting to be on TikTok? Um, my, my sort of mindset was still sort of targeting the 20-pluses. The um, yeah, I'm starting to search for electricians and follow what content they're putting on. Um, I find some people are there's a, a tools sort of a channel of following, and and they do just do tool reviews. So sort of glad to see a few of those popping up where I don't have to do a silly dance to a silly song <laughs> and uh, <laughs> try to get in that path. I'm, uh, yeah, I think I'll just maybe adjust it to reviews or yeah. Anyway, gotta gotta put a, a bit of a strategy together for TikTok. Yeah, I, I just ask kids, like, what are you going to do when you get older, like, for work? You know, there's going to be a lot of jobs that are going to be automated. And, uh, you know, the yeah. trade jobs might not be automated as quickly, but it's something to think about. Yeah, it's, it's something I'll talk to my kids about now. The, our oldest is 13, and the next one is 10-year-old. And mm-hmm. sort of, I sort of try to tell them, you know, you never know what sort of jobs are going to be around when you're <laughs> ready to enter the workforce. Because, you know, explained to them 10 years ago, there was no such thing as a, you know, iPhone app job so it's uh it's hard to hard to guess what you know what may be there yep so what are your goals for uh for this week uh daily goals have been going good just uh at least three posts a day and i'll tick them off of my daily run sheet as i go um i got one of the last week's goals completed which was the ubiquity link between a house and a shed for a oh, friend yeah. of mine okay cool uh, awesome. that was good i um i did a post on that i had a just use a, a ruckus indoor link, which I've used them in the past and it worked fine. But for some reason, this one, the, the link just kept losing sync. So uh, I was just trying to do it, you know, cheap as possible for this guy. Uh, but in the end, yeah, the ubiquity link just, you know, should have went with that one straight away. But I was trying to save this guy a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, it's, it's not worth it. <clears throat> uh, I, think I'll, I think I'll just go with that one from now on. Uh, and uh, still got an, an alarm job to get back to um it's it's totally out of my way to drive or i'll drive the complete opposite direction to work so uh <laughs> right. it's a uh, i sort of really got to have a, a four hour window or even and without any kids activities to get to in the in the evening um so it's been a bit of a challenge just to to allocate time to get to that but uh that's my first alarm job too so i'm you know excited to do it but uh yeah, just, just allocating that time has been a challenge. And uh, I really want to get it done soon because the, the guy, we're, we're just swapping favours for this one. He's um, We're building a house soon, so he's going to help us with our driveway and a bit of landscaping. So, um, yeah, I really got to get there and finish it for him. Yeah, well, de- definitely reach out to us if you, if you start, like, freaking out or something. <laughs> you can't figure out the alarm job. So Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I um the guy who got it off, he's the guy who got the cameras off. He's um he's very helpful, but he's yeah he's hard to catch. So, gotcha. Um, yeah. So no, all going good, mate. Cool, man. Well, I'm glad you uh you joined, and I think you're about to go to work here soon, aren't you? It's it's Monday for you, right? It is. Yeah, Monday morning. <laughs> just, uh, our daughter had a big busy it. weekend dancing, so uh, just letting her sleep in a bit more. I'm going to drive her directly yeah. to her school. Normally, I'll drive her to the bus stop, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, thanks for getting on so early, man. I appreciate it. Nah, it's good, mate. As I've told you in the past, it's great to be a part of this, mate. It's, uh, it's really good what you're, what you're creating here, mate. It's fantastic. Appreciate it, man. Cool.
Um, let's see, Jacob, he's not on the call. Uh, Brandon, what you got going on, brother? Looks like you got a lot of a lot of items. So I had a chance to reach out to Theron, got an account set up there. I have Good. stuff heading our way on that. Got nowhere with the website, got nowhere with any <laughs> of the other stuff. Um, but I did bring two 3CX phone systems online this past week. Got another one pre-deployed. And then I got called out to a car dealership for a printing issue with their new DMS software. And as I posted, parlayed that into two network cleanups, new switches, new Wi-Fi, camera system. So that took up most of the end of my week getting that together and presenting that to them. So it's been a busy week. And then cool. coming up this following week, I got to finish up a few things with those phone deployments and then uh, pull wire at a funeral home that's in a 1890 built house. So I have no idea how we're getting the wire from the basement to the second floor at this point in time for one of the phones. 1890 is when it was built? Yeah, yeah. So where we are in Western New York, we're uh, right on the Erie Canal. So a lot of the uh, towns have very, very, very old houses in the villages. <laughs> and uh, my parents' house was actually built in 1915. <laughs> And our warehouse, the first section of that was built in 1875. So, I mean, I'm used to this, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting trying to figure that one out. Take take some pictures and some video. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'm gonna t I got to take a picture. There's a chimney stack going from the basement all the way up to the third floor, and the basement must have been their kitchen because this fireplace down there is set up to be like an old kitchen setup with uh black kettle pot and grating and all this different type of stuff. So I got to take a picture of that too. Cool. What else? What else this week? Oh, I think that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sure finish, we'll got to Go finish ahead. getting a few people off of uh, my old RMM. I'm still just so far behind on that getting moved over to Dado. So chipping away at that as fast as I can. Cool. And then on that Datto note, when you guys are deploying some of your access control systems and all that, are they on Windows servers that are managing some of that software, or is it Linux? For me, it's it's Windows. Uh, I I'm a Honeywell guy, so it's either Pro Watch or Winpack. So who supports those servers with updates and all that type of stuff? Is it the client or you guys? If it's Winpack, it's Windows Seven or XP. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it runs on Windows 10 Pro, Marco. <laughs> Ooh, updated. <laughs> Any, but yeah, so it, it's it's kind of a, a mixed bag in terms of who does the patch management and updating of those computers. Um, we don't have a solid like guideline for it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, some type of an RM, not what me and Chris use, but there's cheaper ones out there. Repair Shopper has their own. Um, there's a couple of different ones out there that basically it's just a flat fee per agent every month. So like I pay a dollar 30 per computer every month, but some of these are like 99 bucks a month. And what I'm thinking for you guys is it allows you to monitor those systems a lot better. So yeah. you'll be alerted if a hard drive dies, if a service fails, if RAM's being taxed, CPUs are being taxed, all that different type of stuff. And you can automate your patch management and your third party um, patching too. So Flash, Adobe, Java, all that stuff gets taken care of automated with these systems. Wait, so is this a data Datto product that you're well, talking about? Well, that's what Datto RMM does, but there's a thousand different RMMs out there. Gotcha. So Datto might not be the best fit for you guys because we have an onboarding fee plus we're paying a per agent fee. So we're paying a, anywhere from a dollar to two and a half, three dollars per computer, depending on how many endpoints you put on. But there's other options out there. Like there's a program called Synchro that is made by Repair Shopper. And I want to say they charge $99 a month for unlimited PCs. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty good. So yeah, that perfect, might be something. I mean, it's right. So that might be a nice asset for you guys to have. Just something that you can easily monitor the systems. Nothing crazy like what we're using on the MSP sides, but just something to monitor these systems for you, get good feedback so you can be more proactive than reactive if a machine goes down. 
That's actually really good advice. What is the name of the product? Synchro. Synchro. Okay. Yep. I don't know. How to if I recall it. correctly, I think I think Kaseya has a uh, per technician price as well. I think. I think they're they're pricey though, right? If I'm not mistaken, because I've looked at them before. Possibly, I just know one one of our customers uses them, and I could have swore they had a uh, uh, per technician pricing, but they might might not might be wrong on that. Yeah, I mean your pricey ones out there are Dado, Continuum, uh, ConnectWise. SolarWinds is depending on what pricing and what sales agent you talk to that day. Depends on their pricing, but Synchro and there's another one. I think it's called Altera. Are there's Ninja, Ninja out there as well. Too. Ninja yeah. RMM. Repair Ninjas Shop and Ninja expensive. work together. Repair Shopper and Synchro are the same thing. So well, same, same underlying company, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's actually really, really good advice. I appreciate it. I'll, um, yeah. I'll, I'll pass that. I'll, I'll, I'll pass that along. Think, uh, Synchro. How do you spell it? That's how you spell um, it. S Y N C R O. E R O. Okay, sorry. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's in the uh, the document. I put a link to it. <clears throat> yeah, and if you guys don't have any type of ticketing systems or anything like that, you can incorporate Repair Shopper in with Synchro also. So alerts would create tickets and alert mm, you with okay. a ticket. Yeah, I, I was using Zendesk, just the free trial, and uh, they call me every three months, but there, it's not in the budget. It, it's really hard to get um, approval for software, period. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what we use, Blake. We use Zendesk. Zendesk, yeah. I, I, I like it just for internal stuff for now. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, especially if you you know set up the emails. So we have everything go to it. Sales support. Uh, service and it all gets categorized, you know. Just another reason why we should look at the future, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> On gold standard going forward, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also something to really, really dig into just from a security standpoint. I mean, that's something we've always, you know, taken as we're starting to get into more access control coming from the IT standpoint. I mean, I'll be honest, that almost scares me more than, uh, more, more than a lot of other things that, you know, if that if that Windows computer gets breached or that, you know, in our case, PDK system gets breached, um, that it's giving, you know, full full access in. I mean, you know, we, we deal with, you know, marijuana dispensaries and stuff like that where, you know, we've got vaults that have multi, multiple million dollars worth of products that's sitting behind our locks and going, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if somebody were to hack that computer or that, you know, network, uh, you know, what, where is our, our, what are we doing to make sure that doesn't happen? Um, so, you know, the first step of, of having a, an agent on there, good RMM, good, good antivirus, you know, firewall situation, you know, really trying to lock those systems down as hard as, as much as possible is, uh, at least in my opinion, pretty, pretty mission critical for, for us at least. Chris, these things yeah. keep me up at night. So thank you for another sleepless night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long Just as I don't talk about that with my insurance agent. Alexis. <laughs> what, what did you say, Marco? <laughs> I said, just think we could all be using Amazon Alexas and putting laser beams at it and getting into people's houses. <laughs> cool. All right. So Steve Van Horn, he said he could not be on the call, but he did give an update. Um, he was able to diffuse a negative experience for, uh, with a customer. Go Steve. Uh, he's, he's a nice guy, so I could see him doing that. And he set that as one of his goals because he does a lot of service calls. Um, so two good customer service interactions. I love that. Um, cool. I think that's it. We had another epic meeting, folks, and we have shirts. Make sure you you're, get your logo in. And what's what's the next step, Marco? For this, we gotta we gotta lock it down. Yeah, we gotta wrap it up. I think I think we just gotta set a, a hard deadline. You know, let's say Wednesday, and we'll lock it up, and then I'll I'll get. I'll have them uh, at custom make, make sure that uh, everything looks squared away on there, and we'll just we'll start putting things together. We'll put an order out, and uh, you know, or or a link, I should say. Yeah. So we you send the there. link out, and then we can individually make the purchase. Correct. Correct. Sweet. Fantastic. Awesome. I love it. 
All right. Wonderful. Um, let's get back. To, let's get back to our Sundays. I, I, I appreciate everybody getting on the call. Uh, I, I once again learned a ton today. So I thank you so much. I hope you guys learned some stuff as well. And uh, we'll be in touch in the Slack channel. I'll publish this, this to YouTube. Uh, send that link out there as an unlisted link. And then we'll go from there. So, guys, y'all have a good Sunday. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You too. Thank you. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Blake.